Hi friends! Today we are covering my holy grail products and I had a tough time creating this list because I have so many favorites as I'm sure you do. We rotate makeup items depending on the season, the mood, what our skin is doing, what our soul is feeling like. And at this moment, I gathered the items that I feel I return to often, I rely on heavily to produce a makeup look that's just flawless, solid, and enough right? Because I get in this headspace of like, I have to do the most glamorous, I have to do this, the most pow wow wow. At the end of the day, I've been a little more minimalistic in my approach and my application, and I just discovered just smaller nuances that could exist and could be fine, right? So you might be surprised with a lot of these products. Some of them you haven't seen for a little while, but at the end of the day, and I wanted to make this clear, I am approaching this through the lens of practicality, of if I were stuck on a desert island type of scenario. So it's not gonna be so much like a favorite, more so yes, a favorite, but a product that's just gonna hold me down no matter what, despite me having other favorites. And if it's your first time here, hi. I'm Alicia, an online coach who specializes in flexibility, body weight training, helping those create sustainable nutrition and movement habits. And I also love to talk about the makeup. While I cover these items, I'll also apply them so you can see them in action. And to do that successfully, I think it's time for you to come in a little closer. <laughs> That's enough. Let's start with the first holy grail item that I have used time and time again that I featured in my how to perfect your complexion video. And also keep in mind, these are products for my skin type, which right now runs, I would say normal, normal to oily because it is summertime. It's, it's a little more dewy, -y. but I would still use this product, but more strategically. And that is the Auric Glow Lust, the Radiant Luminizer. Is that the official name? I have this in Sunstone as well as several other shades. You can use this as pinpoint highlighting, as a standalone perfector for the complexion because it has pearls in it. So it reflects light and reflects, you know, the light bounces the imperfections away. Boing, boing, boing. I have this in Sunstone, which is closer to my actual skin tone. Well, maybe not now because I, I do get a little bit of a tan. Perhaps citrine will be a more appropriate shade to apply all over my skin, as well as possibly mixing it with your moisturizer. Samantha Ravindal, the founder of Auric, had cover different ways you can use the Glow Lust. And as you see, I'm just using it to apply highlight on the high points of my face, the cheekbones a little higher on the cheek area here, over the brow, a little bit on the chin. You could also place some on the nose and in addition, you can mix this with your foundation or you can apply it first and foundation on top. And what this will do is create a beautiful luminous finish on the skin. Again, it has the soft focus effect because of the light bouncing off. That actual occurrence lessens the look of blemishes without actually having to rely on a ton of makeup to cover the blemish, right? Because again, a lot of coverage might look okay on camera, but in person, it can look quite heavy on the skin. In, but when using a product with a lot of pearl and reflectivity in it, not so much metallic, but again, more of a luminous soft glow finish, that tends to lessen the look of blemishes and marks on the skin. So again, this is crucial whether I wear it solo as I just applied it now, highlighter, liquid highlighter, under the foundation, with the foundation, with moisturizer, it just is that impactful and that important. Foundation. I was tossing back and forth because although this might be a recent favorite to be considered holy grail, as I realized I was not using it for years and years and years and years, I still think because it is so good that it just went up in rank for holy grail status immediately. And that is no other than the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. Listen, this is so fluid in its role for light to medium coverage, which I think is primarily marketed 
as, but you can layer this foundation and it will still not look heavy on the skin. In fact, it's very liquidy, or not, not super liquidy, it's just perfect consistency, right? Lightweight, just enough. And the dial is in your hands in regards to achieving the amount of coverage you wish without overwhelming the skin. You can start off lightly with a couple of doses of the foundation. And once you blend it all in, which we're going to do right now, you can evaluate from there how you want to go. And I could also argue that this can serve as like a, a spot treatment, if you will. Some people like to use foundation on the portions of the skin that need most coverage, evening of tone. If you experience a lot of redness, maybe around the nose or on the mouth, area you can use the NARS to tackle that in making it look more even toned or you could place it all over your face but again the texture is just so buttress smooth it melts into the skin effortlessly and with the auric forget it it's just a match made in heaven and it is particularly hot right now in my room as if I have the AC on, there will be background noise. And I just, I'm sorry, let me move my shirt from the door handle, sorry. So you might notice my skin looking extra glowy, extra dewy. And the color matches perfection. Right now, I'm in the shade Syracuse. I could use Valencia when I'm a little more winter pale. But again, I had mentioned this in my latest Get Ready With Me Makeup Archives video that I think this will be nominated for Best Foundation of 2022. I know the Hourglass is getting rave reviews right now. Just this right here, unstoppable. Concealer, let me just mention a few of the, the contenders. Pat McGrath, The Say, what other concealers have I used before? Oh my gosh, back in the day when I used uh, Too Faced Born This Way concealer, there were a couple of other great concealers throughout my life that I used, that I loved. But as of late, I grabbed this concealer whether I want coverage under the eyes, want to tackle blemishes on my skin, if I was using a skin tint or something lighter than the NARS to cover the blemishes on the larger regions of my face but didn't want to actually use a foundation, it's the LYS. It's just easy. It doesn't have too little coverage, too much coverage. And if I wanted, I could use this concealer again on portions of my face that need a little more coverage, but it doesn't overwhelm the complexion. It doesn't look heavy. It has a beautiful brightening quality about it. Oh yes, the Fenty concealer. Oh my gosh, how could I forget? I used that for a little bit. Again, I just think the LYS harmoniously, whoo, that was hard to get out, combines coverage, but just an elegant finish on the skin. You can layer this more if you want, but again, just look at that. The under eyes are good without looking overly heavy, like overly made up, which listen, I love the Pat McGrath concealer for that role. If you want your under eyes to look like blank canvases, okay? That's definitely the concealer to use, but because again, context. It's been the summertime. It's a little warmer. I tend to not use heavier or heavier coverage complexion products. And typically I would use a concealer to tackle the under eye circles as well as uneven areas of my face and blemishes. I just like a medium coverage concealer that takes care of that easily. Again, without me worrying about it looking too heavy, it's just easy to blend. It's, all the check boxes are there, okay? And that brings us to Palgia, which was also difficult and a product I haven't used in quite some time. But as you know, one of those products, if you were left with, if everything just burnt down, you had this one Palgia, or I had this one Palgia, I will be fine. And that is the Charlotte Tilbury Air Brush, Air Brush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder. This is a favorite product among many in that, listen, whether it'll be under the eyes, all over the face, this powder is just undetectable. And the way it beautifully sets the concealer without it looking powdery under the eyes, because that is, I think, an issue sometimes one who has dry skin runs into where they want to set the concealer, but they don't want it to look too made up 
but this will provide the setting, but will have a beautiful luminous finish. And you can take this on larger areas of your face if you wanted to set around the face, if you wanted to set around the mouth, around the nose, which I typically like to take my powder down the jaw, or all over if you want more of a matte finish you can apply more powder but what i like is although it will deliver that matte finish it's not going to make the skin appear dull it's gonna it's gonna mattify it's gonna set your makeup but still have your skin looking like itself fresh glowy soft focus you know the light will still bounce off of it it will have a place to shine. Next up, we have to go to brows, and I know, you know, this pencil has been my ride or die for so long. Despite me loving the Charlotte Tilbury brow cheat, what I appreciate about that pencil is the ability to change out or refill the actual pencil part. I just think that is less expensive, less waste, maybe Benefit will implement that feature in the future where we could just buy this part, buy the refill, put it in when we run out and not have to rebuy an entire pencil unit each and every time we run out. This is in the shade 3.5 and the brow line from Benefit was created by Danessa Myricks. Whether it was co-created or created, she was a huge part in this this brow product line in Benefit. And what I just adore, not only the actual formula, it's not too dry, not too creamy, it's the shades, man. I think the shades are beautifully thought out. At one point, they had a, a few and then they expanded as indicated by the 0.5 number. So 3.5 wasn't here on the first launch, but when it eventually hit the shelves, I was like, this is the one. It's not too cool, not too warm, just in the middle, gives me enough structure. And I do prefer this one over the Precisely My Brow. I love the Precisely My Brow too. I have it on standby just to, sh just to show my loyalty. But what I prefer about the Goof Proof is the triangular design of the pencil makes it quicker to get the brows on, right? And it's just oddly satisfying to use a pencil like this. I don't know what it is. I guess perhaps the wider surface area allows for more pigment to hit the skin quicker, but still precisely at the same time. Whereas I would understand how one would prefer precisely my brow because you can create those more hair-like strokes on the skin that perhaps you cannot with this type of a pencil but I appreciate how quickly it fills my brows. You can see they're fluffed, but not too dark, not too deep, deep brown, because that's a mistake I used to make in using a brow pencil that was too dark brown. It just added a little too much contrast to my complexion, so I stuck with the 3.5 shade for a very long time because I think it's just fantastic for my skin tone and for my brows. I could experiment with a, a lighter color. Some people actually use a lighter color on the front of their brow, a deeper one towards the tail to create a lovely gradient. And as fun as that is, again, from a practical standpoint, you know, if I have to get out the door, I'm gonna use just one brow pencil. In fact, I would like to honorably mention the same brand's brow product, the Gimme Brow. If I didn't really have time to do what I just did with the pencil, the Gimme Brow has pigment, but it also has some hold. In addition to little brow fibers here that add fluff to the brow, and even if I have like some bald spots, as you probably saw before I took the pencil to my brow, this kind of fills it up in a, not as a precise way as the pencil does, but does a good enough job that won't leave my brows looking bare, okay? It has fluff, it has a little bit of structure, it has the color, this is number three. Yes, the brow pencil, holy grail, but if I had room for two products, it would be the Goof Proof, and the Gimme Brow <sighs> blush, again, really hard. It was between Phytosurgeon's 
Skin Spark Blush Bomb and Infernal, Suku Pure Color Blush, Pat McGrath's Divine Blush. And the winner is, you knew, you knew, Paradise Venus has to be one of the most iconic shades I'm being serious that I've ever encountered while I realize I haven't been in this makeup space for a long time. I get it. You know when you encounter a shade and a formula that's just so epic in that every time you use it, it's like using it for the first time. When you use a product that's just so outrageously, gorgeously beautiful, you're like, oh my gosh. Paradise Venus, as I gushed over in my terracotta blush video, that is the type of shade that not only gives you structure, but it just gives you the perfect amount of flush. And I'm so confident in the shade that I'm using a big old brush, Sonagy's, Face Pro to just envelop huge regions of my face <laughs> with this color and the the hue that it gives and I, I get I get it I just love that sunburnt look year round year round I might lighten it up a little bit when it gets cooler for sure I'll probably move to more of the mauvey shades the plums the wines you know but this no matter what like look look, look at me Look at me, it's so gorgeous. And that's why I didn't include a bronzer because sometimes I don't apply bronzer, I skip it, where the shade like one Paradise Venus gives you the structure, the sun-kissed glow, more red tone of course, but it also gives you the flush, okay? It just hits all those marks and if I had to choose one bronzer from the top of my head, I was going to include the House Labs bronzer. And I know what you might be thinking, you're like, girl, that just came out, what are you doing? Like, you're being a prisoner of the moment. Listen, I've been using that bronzer a lot ever since I purchased it, and the color is perfection. I love how it looks on my skin. It doesn't look like powder. It just beautifully melts. That or even the LYS, right? Harmony is a great color. It was, it would have been hard for me to pick. It would have been hard for me to pick. But again, I went with Paradise Venus because need I say more? Need I say more? For the last few months, and although before I was using a lot of Pauja highlighter, and there are a ton of favorites in that category, by the way. I could suggest, recommend a ton of powder highlighters that I think are sick. Again, from a practicality standpoint and just Using this product, not only with makeup, but even on bare skin, which I think was the deciding factor for me. I sometimes think with powder highlighters, it requires more makeup as its base because it will look a little bit out of place. Hey, rhymes. If you just applied it on bare skin, but if it's a cream highlighter. This is the Pat McGrath Dual Highlighter Stick. I have it in the shade Golden. And what I adore about this product is that you get both the glass skin balm side, universal side, and the shimmer side. This comes in three colorways, the golden that you see here, nude and bronze. What I love about the universal shade, again, if I was just doing bare skin and applied this on my bare skin, it would just be like, oh, your cheekbones are so beautiful. But if I did that with a powder highlighter, it would just be like, did you finish your makeup? Did you finish blending? See what I'm saying? And if you wanted a little more of a shimmer finish, you can go in the bomb shade first and then over top with the golden shade. I don't know what it is with this cream highlighter. It just looks beautifully natural, but exquisitely shiny and just perfect on the skin. Easy to blend, easy to apply. It's emollient, but not too slippy, right? And again, you don't have to go with the shimmer shade. You could just go with the universal balm shade if you're using maybe a skin tint or maybe a cream blush and you just needed something to highlight the cheeks, but you didn't want it to appear overly shimmery, shimmery, shimmery or metallic. Come on. Come on. And you're probably wondering, hey, what is she gonna suggest for eyeshadow? Is she even going to include eyeshadow? This was tough, fam, because you know how I love my eyeshadow palettes to create looks with several shades at once. 
I thought long and hard and I decided to go with Viziart. You're like, where's Pat McGrath? Where, where, where is she? Listen, as I said, a favorite. There are several favorites that I have on my list, but if I, again, were to approach this from, if I had just one palette for a month, something crazy, right? I couldn't buy another palette. I was stranded, what have you. This right here, Viseart is just so reliable, it's sick. The mattes are smooth, easy to blend. The metallics, although maybe not as punchy as Pat McGrath metallics, they're just really easy to deal with. And I would even argue there are some textures in Viseart, specifically this is the edit version of many palette designs in the Viseart brand that have like these sparkle overlay shades that I think quite beautiful. Sure, it's not gonna be like astral solstice but again if I still wanted that sparkle and shine and glitz I could still get it from a Viseart palette and this specifically is Paris edit I had a hard time picking which one I wanted to do for this video but I thought Paris edit will be uh, something nice to go with maybe kind of weird with Paradise Venus Another one would be the Atandu uh, curation. That would be really nice. But listen, let's just go real quick here, okay? I'll apply concealer as my eyeshadow base. I do have the Linda Eye Primer on standby. But, you know, if I didn't have that, I would go in with concealer first. I can steer a little more warm, and we'll start with this just like peach tannish type of a shade and I'll throw it through the crease here. It's not going to provide a lot of depth. It's just going to give me like a matte finish on the lid, yeah? If I want a little more color, then I'll pop into this plum shade. I'll start by placing the shadow on the outer lid. Once I get that down, I could bring it through the crease for a little more definition. And what I adore about Viseur mattes is just how fluid they are, how easy they blend without much effort. It's, it's remarkable. I don't know what is in this freaking eyeshadow, but man, did they figure it out. I'll take this bronze shade here with my finger and what I love about Viseur metallics is that they're very soft. The edges blur easily and you could actually apply these textures without a matte if you wanted to go super easy peasy. And why not? Let's invite this brighter shade here onto the inner part of the lid so it has a little more shine and bump and we can kind of scatter that higher in towards the inner part of the eye. I'm taking the metallic plum shade here over where I applied that plum matte because why not, you know? And any of these shades I just applied, whether it was this one, this one, or this one, you can just apply solo on the lid if you want it a one and done moment and keep it as simple as possible. And we'll go in with this shade. It could be either this one or this one for a brightening moment on the lower inner part of the lash line. It has like a, a yellow flip to it, but I think great to go in with a shade as this to add a little bit of brightness there. And I'm using the plum matte for the rest of the lower lash line. Just doing some fluffing to finish everything off. You know a liner I'm gonna say. Gave you a clue in my last video and without a doubt, Pat McGrath's Permagel Liner in Black Coffee. If I wanted to, let's say, just have it where I don't have a sharpener, hello? The reason this is so holy grail, grail, grail is if I had an eyeshadow palette that I needed more depth from, I could use black coffee as a base, blend it on the outer part of my lid, and then apply a shadow on top or just use another shadow to build the gradient. And that will give me more depth without me necessarily having to carry another eyeshadow palette or worry about uh, the shade selection because black coffee holds it down, man. Like, and also if I wanted a wing moment, I could use this color that it's not so, 
<sighs> it's brown, but it's like black brown. It's the perfect balance between those shades, which I feel offers fantastic structure, intensity to the lash line without it appearing too bold if you don't want it to, especially when pairing this color with softer shades like the ones that exist in Paris Edit. Well, I understand, listen, I would go with the black pencil if you just need that intensity, no matter what shadows you carry, you much prefer to have a black liner. I just feel I find that the black coffee is a little more practical in having this in no matter what makeup bag or what makeup I decide to carry, it's just foolproof, you know? Because for me, at least for my skin tone, I think it gives me really nice intensity while still being glam. If I wanted to wholly commit to something super duper glam, then yes, I would suggest a black pencil, but black coffee holds it down. Like, come on, you can't. Holy Grail Tools is coming soon. Can't do without my refer eyelash curler. Man, does this bump it up. And you know the mascara, or I should say, mascaras that I'm about to show. I could do one, but I mostly do both. The Clio Professional Kill Lash and the Issa Mascara. <sighs> I guess if I had to pick, it would be Clio Professional because the Super Proof has outrageous curling power. This stuff just makes your lashes stay up. But if you wanted a softer serving of mascara, you're going light with the shadow or we're doing no shadow or maybe just an eye pencil. I think Kill Lash fluffs up the lashes enough without it looking too crazy by itself, right? It doesn't give you spottery lashes. It gives you nice, fluffy, curly lashes. But the curl for me is what does it. It really adds structure to my lashes and is a great setup for the Issa Mascara because I do prefer the curling power from Kill Lash over the Isom mascara, but what the Isom gives is more black pigment and it stiffens my lashes a little bit and just gives them a lot more va va boom. But the crucial step is the kill lash. You you need to get that on first or else at least I do, right? Cause look at that. I'm telling you. If I had to pick my holy grail falsies, it will have to be the Ardell Naked Lash. I love those. They're not too crazy in your face, but they definitely give the eyeshadow a little bit more life because I know sometimes depending on the look, it will call for a hardier lash. If your lashes on their own can't deliver that, either 433 or 431, those are my favorites. You knew this was coming too. Pat's Structure Lip Liner. It's like the perfect beige. Not too warm. It is on the warmer side, but not too cool either. You could actually apply this on your entire lip and maybe gloss on top, you know? My Holy Grail lip product, bouncing back and forth between several, but I have to give it to Suku's Fluid Lip Glow 08 Suyama. This texture, the lip glow, is so supremely creamy, but the color itself is definitely more neutral of a beige, but I just love like that slightly grungier tone of her color. And it feels so smooth on the lip. I just, and the shine left behind. It was between this or the Dior Forever Rouge lipstick, which I love. So that one is a lighter beige. And when I pair it with structure, it gives me like a super glam look to the lip. So if I had to pick two, yes, I know Penny Beige. Where's Penny Beige, Alicia? I still love her. She's in the realm of favorites, but right now, the Lip Fluid Glow in this, I don't even need a liner, but I like to have the structure liner on standby. Even if I just had structure, I could apply that on the entire lip, as you saw, a little gloss on top. If I had it, I know I did not present a favorite gloss. <gasps> 
maybe because I don't wear gloss very often, so I just stuck to lip liners and lipsticks. Hmm. It's so silky. And here is the finished look using all of my Holy Grail products, which for now they are. Who knows if this list will change in the future, but I feel great about my picks and applying them now for this demo just proves how wonderful they are in holding it down for all my makeup wishes to come true. Let me know what your holy grail products are down below, if they change with the seasons, what have you. Ones that never change are forever holy grails. I will see you down in those comments fam. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, holy grail video, the brushes edition, or monthly fade. Take care, and I will see you again soon.